Just imagine you're perfectly healthy one day and fighting for your life the next day. That's how fast and how hard meningitis strikes and why many colleges are requiring teens to have the meningitis vaccine. Melissa talks with this young reporter who knows that scoop firsthand. And a warning on this to your health, you're going to see some very graphic pictures. In his final weeks of college, Topeka Capital Journal reporter Andy Marceau found himself on the other side of the headlines. Overnight, I went from like totally healthy to almost dead. Andy told a friend he was going to bed early with what he thought was the flu. By morning, he could barely get up. A couple of friends of mine came to check on me and uh, they actually had to carry me downstairs, put me in a car and take me to the doctor. Andy had a rare form of bacterial meningitis. He was flown to KU Med where he'd spend the next 119 days. The bacteria had gone all throughout my bloodstream so it had compromised all my vital organs. It also cut off the blood supply to Andy's hands and feet. So this was probably just a couple weeks before the amputation. These photos show the graphic consequences. When I woke up, my um, fingers and toes were pretty much rotting away while still attached to my body. Doctors compared it to having third degree burns over 30% of his body. The treatments were just like a burn patient, removing dead tissue and grafting new skin. They saved his arms and legs, that's a brace he wears, but he had a total of 16 surgeries to reshape his hands and feet. One of those college friends, Randy Schumacher, is now a doctor at Topeka's pediatric care. I've seen what it's done firsthand. His friend's ordeal is why he's a strong proponent of the meningitis vaccine. It's recommended after age 11 with a booster at age 16, before kids head off to college where they're more at risk since the bacteria spreads through close contact. When you get a lot of incoming freshmen um, that maybe are a little bit sleep deprived and so their immune systems are down a little bit and put them all in one close group on on-campus housing, um, then it really does create a, almost a petri dish for this. Andy agrees if more teens and parents were educated, they wouldn't hesitate to get the shot and lower their risk. He wishes he'd known. I think I knew it was contagious. I didn't, I don't think I knew, I know I didn't know that it was like potentially fatal, that it could do this to me. Despite it all, he knows how lucky he is. And you have a choice. You're either like, well, I'll just give up or try and go as far as I can with what I've left. And that's a pretty easy choice. Wow, uh, we very much appreciate Andy coming to see us and sharing his story. This meningitis vaccine covers four bacterial strains responsible for about 85% of meningitis cases. Most insurance now covers it. And after the ordeal of Andy Marceau, the State Board of Regents adopted a requirement for all students who live in on-campus housing to have that vaccine.